So good to see everybody here. It's just a wonderful long weekend, I guess. I mean, I know many people will have to work Monday, but then we get Tuesday off, so that's going to be great. And I know a lot of people have taken it really as a, a nice sort of little break at the, the end of January. And uh, we had a great little break this week. We went down to Boat Harbour for four days and just had a, a great time with Rod and Penny and others. And it, was, it sort of really did show me, I must admit, that uh, Tassie's got some of the most beautiful places on the planet. I mean, I know Boat, Boat Harbour's lovely and, you know, we, we, we all go there sort of from time to time. But when you actually stop there and stay there, it's like, hey, this place is really great. The water's cold, but the place is really great. We, we, we swam morning and night and uh, snorkeled and fished and did all sorts of great things. And it sort of got me thinking, like, you know, it's, going to Noosa is a lot of fun in a way, but just, just being local is, is just so, so good. Home was only nine minutes away. We sort of needed something at one stage, so I just drove home. For some reason, Rod and I decided barbecue chicken would be good on, on, on Wednesday, I think it was, so we drove in. And it was really funny. We drove into Woolies just to get a barbecue chicken. And when we got to Woolies, guess what? There was one barbecue chicken left. <laughs> just one that was it I'm going oh, it must just be for us so we, we bought the barbecue chicken and off off we went and it was great and I got got back and Fiona said oh you bought a free range one and I said it was the only one <laughs> and it, was, it was good so we've had, we've had a great time thank you for everybody's uh, well wishes I do appreciate it uh, turning 60 is not bad it's great uh, and I find that every milestone birthday is actually great. You can either approach it with an attitude of, this is awesome, or, you know, some people go, oh, I'm getting old. I, I'm, I'm thinking 70 may be getting old. I'm sort of thinking, that's going to be the next one, and it's sort of, I don't know, but I'm sure as I get there, yeah, if, you, if, if we take Wendy as an example, it's young. You know, just a, just, just a spring chicken. And uh, so good. So thank you, everybody, for your wonderful gifts and uh, just well wishes. I really have appreciated it, and I've appreciated my family being around and being up. It's been wonderful. Let's just get into this life key this morning. I'm not Kylie, by the way. Can I point that out? I don't look anywhere near as good as Kylie does. And uh, she prepared a great word for, for all of us this morning, but unfortunately she's come down really sick this morning, and so she's not able to preach. So... I'm going to preach and we'll, get, we'll make room for Kylie uh, a little bit later sometime when we can fit that in. So Father, we just thank you that uh, you have another great life key for us this morning. And we just thank you for your goodness over each one of us in this room. I thank you that you're actually doing something fresh this morning. You do it every morning. Your word tells us that your mercies are new every day. But this morning is your morning and you're doing something fresh and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, we're talking about uh, service this morning. We've already covered a few things. The first week we started with everything starts with God. That's the beginning. That's the greatest life key you can ever grab a hold of, that everything starts with God. It's not about us. The second thing we looked at was worship. We looked at the fact that we're, we are created to worship Him. And as we do that, we actually find we get spiritual clothing. I love what Alison was talking about this morning, and I, I love how things just fit into to what the, the Spirit is doing. But spiritual clothing is really important. Each one of us this morning generally got up and dressed ourselves. The little children were dressed by their parents. But there was clothing for all of us. We had a, you know, a pair of pants to put on, some socks to put on, a shirt to put on, whatever we chose to dress ourselves in this morning to come to church. Most of us didn't find the, 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 the oily, greasy T-shirt that we had on yesterday while we were cleaning our bike chain before we went for a ride. We found something a little bit more presentable, not because we have to look awesome when we come to church, but because we just wanted to just put something on that was nice to, to come into the house of God. We all did that. But one of the things that the Father does for us is give us spiritual clothing. And I think we actually minimize that a great deal. We can actually get a fresh anointing as we come in to the house of God. Each one of us, as we go out into the week, we encounter certain things. Some weeks we have awesome weeks. Some weeks we just sail through as if it's just life is good. Other weeks is like all of a sudden all hell seems to be coming against us and the kitchen sink and, and everything else that's with it. 
and, and it's a tough week. And we get sort of little rips in the clothing and little tears and, you know, so, so, some of the, the armor's sort of getting knocked around a little bit. But when we come into the house of God in worship and even sitting under the word, you have an opportunity. We all have this opportunity for this fresh clothing. And you might go like, that just, you know, that just sounds silly. It's not silly. The Lord actually clothes us with beauty. He clothes us with, with glory. He clothes us with radiance. He clothes us with boldness. He clothes us with courage. He clothes us with truth. He clothes us. Ephesians chapter 6 talks about the things we should put on. You know, he clothes us with those things, with righteousness, with truth, with all these amazing things. And we need those for the week that we're going to face or the month that we're going to face or the year that we're going to face. And, you know, it's important to keep your spiritual clothing in a good state of repair, a really good state of repair. I had a vision quite a while ago now, and I have shared it before, but uh, it was of a locker room. And many of you who like maybe maybe like football or cricket or, or some sort of sports, you know, they have locker rooms. And most locker rooms, when you reach the pinnacle of the sport, uh, when you go into the locker room, your name is on, on your locker, your shirt is hanging there. I mean, a lot of things are taken care of. Uh, for you and you put your uniform on and you go out with the team and you play. Well, I saw this, I saw this locker room, like a locker room of heaven and, and all, of our, all of our shirts were there. All, our, all of our shirts were there hanging up with your locker but a lot of it wasn't getting used. It was just hanging there. It's there but we, it was almost like the Lord said, people aren't putting them on and getting out and playing the game. You know? But he's providing it for us. The clothing is there, and that's a little bit of a side thing, but I want you to know this morning that he has spiritual clothing for you, and it's important to learn the habit, like Alison was saying, of putting it on. Otherwise, we walk out into the world without the armour, without the clothing that he's given us, without the anointing, without that, that fresh uh, mantle of the peace of God upon us. There are mantles, and I'm not preaching on that at all. I, I, maybe we should do a message on mantles, but there are, there are literally spiritual mantles that God places on us so that we can actually do the things he wants us to do, so that we can actually do it in his strength, not our strength. A lot of the time, I think, in, including myself, we, we start to do things in our own strength, and then we wonder why we're running out of puff. But when we put the mantle of God on, it doesn't say that makes everything easy, but it empowers what we're doing may still be difficult and hard work, but it empowers us to, to, to actually get the thing that the Lord's wanting to do done. And it's just, just a thing to put on the clothing. Don't run out of oil. Get fresh oil. Fresh oil. Like January is a great time. Before we really jump into a year, get fresh oil. Let's not be the people who, who run out of oil halfway through the year or halfway through the week. We know that there is a parable about the wise virgins who topped their, their lamps up. They had oil waiting for the king to come, waiting for the bridegroom to come. And I would encourage us, January is a great time to get some fresh oil and allow that, that, that oil to, to fill you up ready for, for what the year is going to bring. Let's jump into, oh, then we, sorry, the third thing we talked about, church family, and today we're talking about serving or accepting our assignments. Matthew chapter 20, verses 24 to 29 in the Passage translation. <laughs> the Passage. The Passion translation. I'm getting older. <laughs> the other ten disciples were listening to all of this. Now, what they were listening to is two of the disciples that actually asked Jesus if they could be number one and two in the kingdom, sitting next to him on his right hand and his left hand. And actually, they hadn't even come and asked him that. They'd sent mummy. <laughs> These two bold, courageous disciples sent mummy to ask, you know, Jesus, when you, when you come into your kingdom, when you're sitting on the throne, would you mind it if my two boys sat on your right hand and your left hand? And Jesus sort of tells us, look, sorry, you don't really know what you're asking. They probably can't handle that position anyway. Uh, you know, but they said, oh, well, I'm pretty sure we could. But uh, then the other guys, the other 10, they all get, they get a bit miffed and they get a bit upset. And this is what it says. The other 10 disciples were all listening to this and a jealous anger arose among them against the two brothers. Jesus, knowing their thoughts, called them to his side and he said, 
Kings and those with great authority in this world rule oppressively over their subjects like tyrants. But this is not your calling. You will lead by a completely different model. The greatest among you will live as the one who is called to serve others because the greatest honour and authority is reserved for the one with the heart of a servant. For even the Son of Man did not come expecting to be served by everyone but to serve everyone and to give his life in exchange for the salvation of many. Jesus is the role model of servanthood. He, he didn't come to be served, he came to serve. He came to serve each one of us. Jesus came so that each one of us could actually have eternity in our hearts because we get to know him. He didn't come as a king ruler. That, that's what everybody was expecting. And even as he was going through his ministry, a lot of people around him thought, this guy's the Messiah, he's the king ruler, and he's going to take over any moment. We're going to get rid of the Romans, and, and, and we're going to be back in power. And Jesus was trying to tell him, that's not how it is. I'm actually not interested in ruling this world. I'm the king of a kingdom. I'm actually the king of everything. And, and that's, not my, that's not my role. I've actually come to serve so that... Everybody who, who, who gets to know me will actually get to be with me in eternity forever. And that's the model. We come to serve. It's so important that we understand we are called to serve. Rick Warren puts it, puts it like this. We were put on earth to make a contribution. Each one of us is here to make a contribution. Now, I'm going to pick this book up and read from it because it's an amazing book. If you haven't read The Purpose Driven Life, I recommend you do as a devotional. It's a really good read. Uh, mine is texted and written in and notes and everything because it's just so good on how to live a great Christian life as a disciple. And what Rick says here is, you were put on earth to make a contribution. We weren't created to consume resources, to eat, breathe and take up space. God designed you to make a difference with your life. While many best-selling books offer advice on how to get the most out of life, that's not the reason God made you. You were created to add to life on earth, not just take from it. God wants you to give something back. This is God's fourth purpose for your life, and it's called your ministry or service. We were created to serve God. I just think that's just, uh, it's just so straightforward. It's like you read it and go, okay, now we can accept that or reject it. But I find that to be very powerful and very straightforward. Service, I find, is one of our greatest privileges. And it's an honour to serve our King, giving our gift of service to our Saviour. We are not saved by service, but we are saved for service. We would see, um, possibly not so much now, but... And, ooh, sorry, sorry about that. I'm not sure what that is. It's a little bit of an FM intrusion. In some cultures, we see people sacrificing, in a sense, to, to, to the Lord. This is Christians. A lot, a lot of it happens in places like the Philippines and other places where they feel like the things that they do get them saved or the things that they do get them to heaven. And it's not that at all. You can't do anything to get yourself saved. We can't do anything to get ourselves to heaven except the one thing, except Christ into our hearts. And once we've done that, then we get to live a life of service because it's a joy, because we, we want to. And we just need to understand, service will never get you saved. You know, even around church life, just doing things because you think it gets you brownie points in heaven, it doesn't. It, we do it out of a heart of joy. We do it out of a heart of wanting to. And that actually brings great reward in heaven. Personally, I love serving. Ever since I gave my life to, to Jesus as a young boy, around 12 years old, I served in some capacity. I, I started a crusader group in schools. Now, uh, it was in New South Wales, and they had, we, I went to Crusaders, which is a Christian boys' organisation, and uh, it ran camps for, for boys and girls, actually. And uh, there wasn't a group in my school, so at 12 years old, I decided to start one. And so I started a crusader group and, and, and ran it, and people came to it. Uh, I got, got it copped heaps on the football field for it, and, you know, oh, you're a Christian, what a pansy, whatever, you know, it's like. But I just did it because I loved God, and, and, and I kept doing it. And I was also a pretty reasonable footballer too, but, uh, which proved that, you know, they were wrong. But, uh, 
I, I, I just did it because I, I sort of thought, what can I do? It wasn't like I felt I had to do it, but all of a sudden, I wanted to do something for the Lord. So I started the group and, and ran it for quite a few years, and other people got involved, and it was great. And then I started leading on Crusader camps. Now, um, Jacinta and Nathan have been away this week, and are away leading on a camp at Riverbend, because they just love young people. And they thought, what can we do? We can help by being leaders. You know, they're not, they're not just... Um, you know, doing, doing extra youth, they're thinking like, oh, we could lead on a camp. So they're giving some of their time to, to lead on a camp because they love young people. And it helps the Riverbend staff have staff who, who are great to, 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 to serve with them. So I sort of started to do that. I, I just helped wherever I could help. And can I encourage us? That's just the thing to do. Just help wherever you can help. Fiona and I uh, sort of in our early married years, ended up at Hills Christian Life Centre, which is now Hillsong Church. And we just did whatever we could do. We literally got into this church. I, w- I was a good little Anglican boy, and I, I wasn't going to raise my hands and stuff, so I was, I, was, I was carrying Ashley, who was a baby. And I thought, this is great, because if I carry the baby, I don't have to clap, and I don't have to raise my hands. <laughs> It was fabulous, you know. So you know, I thought, Fee can do all that for me. You know, she's there and she's just worshipping the Lord. And I'm just, oh, this is good. But what, what amazed me was that worship was really good. I'd never been to a church. I'd been to a church pretty much with organs and stuff all my life. And it was good church. Don't worry. It wasn't bad church. It was good church. But this was different. And, and there were people, there was a grand piano on stage and there was, there was guitars and there was drums. And I'm going, this is actually pretty cool. And by about week three, you know, maybe I sort of passed the baby on so that I could clap. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm clapping. This is good. This is... Oh, I better have the baby back now. There's not too much clapping. Uh, and then it's like, I have the ba- I'm going to write, oh, yeah, right. This, oh, actually, this feels right. You know, it's like, and it was like training almost because it, it, it wasn't something I was used to doing, but it just felt right. And, and now it's just like so normal, it's not funny. But we just jumped in. And, and we started to serve. I, I can remember Brian Houston running down the stairs of the, of the first warehouse that we were in. It was these wooden stairs. He came running down the stairs and I was just walking by and he said, hey, Jeff. He said, how long have you been here? And I said, six months, I think. And he goes, good, don't tell anybody. <laughs> I went, okay. <laughs> and the reason was, was because we were doing everything. We were running crash. We were, we, were, we were doing men's stuff. We were doing some, uh, Fiona was in the worship team. We were, we were like, every time they said, could you help with this? Yeah, young adults, we did young adults. We, but you know, we probably weren't good at half of it. But they would just go, hey, could you do this? And we went, okay, we don't think we're qualified, but if you think we can do it, we'll give it a shot. And I think sometimes we were probably okay at it, and other times we probably weren't, and that's probably why we moved on. But but we just had a yes. We'd love to serve. Yeah, if you think we could do it. Mike Murphy, my pastor, would ask me, hey, Jeff, would you like to? Yeah, sure, I'll have a shot. I don't feel like I can do it, but if you help me out. And, And we just sort of went from there. All of a sudden, I'm running the video ministry, something I'd never done in my life before. I'm operating Sony DX3500 full television cameras and, and learning all that. Didn't know how to do it, but they said, would you do it? And I went, okay. There was a guy in the church, Mark Thorne, he was great. He taught me a whole bunch of stuff and I could still do it today. There is something fun at being at a big conference on camera and listening to a director and just, just doing the stuff. It's, it's, it's actually a lot of fun to create. It's a creative side of me, I guess, which I don't have the music thing, but I can do that. So we just, we just got involved. We, we just... Uh, served anywhere we could and we found that serving actually opens doors. Serving is really about having that yes in your spirit and being a can-do person. I love 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 10, just one verse. It says, every believer has received grace gifts, so use them to serve one another as faithful stewards of the many coloured tapestries of God's grace. We're all to use them. We've been given these gifts to use. It's so important that we actually find a place where we can actually use our gifts. All of us have been given gifts to use, and our Father expects that we use them and grow them. There is a parable of the talents that the, 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 the only person who got into trouble was the person who was given a gift and did nothing with it, buried it and did nothing with it, and, and that, that servant was, was roasted. Every one of us has a gift that we can use, and you come into this house and... Every, every Sunday or any time we come, 
Everybody is using their gifts. Somebody's on the door. Somebody's doing tech. Somebody's say, you know, is, is doing welcoming. Somebody's doing hospitality. Somebody's doing a crash. Somebody's doing kids' church. Somebody's, I know we've got a little break at the moment for January to give the team a rest. But somebody's speaking. Like Alison gets up this morning and gives us a, an, a wonderful message because she said yes to doing it. And, and she just, every time Alison gets up, she's probably one of the most loved giving moment people because she shares from her heart and she says she shares life and and people love it so we, you know, we'll get you doing it every week no we won't but um people love it because she shares from who she is and she's using that grace gift and and it, and it just works so we and we thank her for doing that we love it but you know there are so many areas in church life that we can all get involved in there's something for everybody to do all of us together can make a wonderful and exciting contribution to the kingdom. They have this thing in the world called the 80-20 rule, where you know, that, that sort of what it says is that really 20% of the people do 80% of the work. And in a lot of organisations, that actually rings true. And, it, and it, it shouldn't really be that way. In the kingdom, I actually think it should be the 100% rule because we should all be using our gift. There shouldn't be 20% of the people doing 80% of the stuff. At least we can flip it and 80% can be doing, doing you know, something. It would be better if 100% was doing it because that's the, really the way it should work. But you do see in a lot of organisations 20% of the people or less doing most of the work. Now, I, 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 I race a bike. I'm not racing this season because I just chose to have a season off. And uh, there was a great race yesterday. And uh, one, of, one, of the, one of the people in our club came third and she's one of the greatest servers in the heart of the club. Sally Atkinson serves and serves and serves. And Dale and Sally has just served the club like you wouldn't believe. They do most of the work. They have a few other great people around them who do some of the work, but they do most of the work. They will miss rides. They will miss races because they, they're so passionate about it. And, and I'm very grateful because, you know, a lot of us who are just members, we, we ride, we race, we take our turns on the roster to do certain things, but we're not really, you know, sort of investing as much as they do. They do a, a sensational job. I know that somebody in, 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 the, in, in the congregation this morning who also does a sensational job in that, cl- that club, and I thank you for it because it's just so awesome because people, we, it doesn't work without everybody sort of contributing. It challenges me because I turn up to race most times because I like to race, um, you know, and, and I don't necessarily think of, could I help? I mean, I do think, could I help? Because there's, there's things you're supposed to do, but that's just the things you must do, the things you're supposed to do to qualify to race. But over and above that, there's a lot more that could be done, but not many people do. And, and, and really, it would be better if more of us in, in the life of our club did more because it would make it easier for the people who are pretty much carrying all the load. But that's, 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 that's what I'm sort of wanting to say, is that if we all do something, then it gets much, much easier for everybody. Mother Teresa would say to new Christians, now Jesus has two more hands to assist in his work. She would just expect it. When somebody came to Christ, she would just expect that now you would like to use your gift to serve Christ. It's just how it is. Rick Warren states this, a saved heart is one that wants to serve. All of us have a ministry within the church family and we also have a mission in the world. And I'm not going to talk about that because that's a different, a different thing altogether. But each of us have a role and sometimes many roles to play and every role is important and every role matters. In the Purpose Driven Life, and I'm sorry if you feel like we're a broken record, it's just that it's a really good devotional to read. Check the clock. Yep, doing okay. Rick goes on to talk about our shape. Now, Kylie was going to talk about that this morning, and or part of, part of what she was going to talk about. And you can actually look that up uh, in the book and, and go to it. It's actually on page 231 in The Purpose Driven Life, and it's day 31 as the devotional. Now, the shape is an acronym. It stands for, number one, spiritual gifts. Number two, heart. Number three, abilities number four, personality, and number five, experience. Your shape is who you are. We all have spiritual gifts. Every person in this room has been given a spiritual gift, and we can all use it. From the youngest to the oldest person, I would encourage us to 
to, to start using your spiritual gifts. You know, start using who you are to serve Jesus. Start using who you are to actually make a difference for the kingdom because he's given you a gift. And as you use the gift, it grows. As you use that spiritual muscle, it grows. It gets stronger. It gets, it, it, as you use it, as Alison was saying, it becomes second nature. Right now, she's learning the moves of Taekwondo. But within maybe a year or two, they're just going to be second nature. So if you walk up behind her and tap her on the shoulder, she's going to go, hi -ya! And you're going to have a you know, karate chop across the neck or you're going to be in a headlock and down on the ground, something like that. So be careful. Don't jump out and surprise her because she just might surprise you. But at the moment, she's training that, that, that sort of thing because it's not natural yet. But, you know, one day Jono's going to come to church and we're going to know that he got hi -yat! Is he? It's good. I love it. I love it when people try new things. It's great. Getting back to the shape, everybody has spiritual gifts. Start to use them. What's your heart? What's in your heart? I love, Kylie had this in her notes. I'm going to read it from Kylie's notes. It says this, The Bible uses the term heart to describe the bundle of desires, hopes, interests, ambitions, dreams, and affections that you have. Your heart, heart represents the source of all your motivations, what you love to do and what you care about most. That's your heart. And when we come from our heart, it's amazing what, what we're able to achieve. Kylie goes on to say, figure out what you love to do, what, gave, what God gave your heart to do, and then do it for his glory. Figure out what you love to do, what God gave you a heart to do, and then do it for his glory. You know, for, for many of our guys, say on the, in our worship team, they figured out, what their heart loves to do, and they do it really well. The passion comes out, the love comes out. I mean, I'm, I'm amazed how, how, how quickly Joseph is growing in the keys. You know, this morning I'm sitting there, Alison's doing an offering message, and I'm thinking, Joseph's playing keys behind her. I'm going like, that's, that's brave. That's really brave because there's a single sort of uh, instrument. You could, you could make a mistake, and when you do, everybody knows it. But he's stepping out. He's brave. I love it. And he's playing some things on there during some of the songs that, that, are, that are fresh and new. And I love it because he's, he's found what his heart loves to do. And he's, he's pursuing that passion. It's not all he loves to do, but it's one of the things. And I just really commend him for it because it's fantastic. Your abilities. Use your abilities to serve the Lord because he wants you to use what you have for his glory. We've all got certain abilities. I've got abilities that you don't have, and you've got abilities that I don't have. And those abilities are all meant to come together in, in one great um, family that actually moves the kingdom forward. Each one of us has great abilities to do certain things, and I would encourage you. Some people in this room... Just, you know, the, the last thing they ever want to do is be up here and be talking. The last thing they ever want to do possibly is even be using technology just in case it doesn't quite go right. But you might be really good at just getting certain things done because you're methodical, because you like to work through things. There are things that you could do in the life of the church that require that sort of gift. It's not my gift. I don't like that sort of stuff all the time. I can do it because you have to, but... You know, some people just love just being able to, to work through something and methodically or to strategize. Or, you know, so you've got abilities and I would encourage you to use them. You've got personality and you're meant to use that too. Your personality is really important. We are not all meant to look the same, be the same, sound the same. Because if we did it, it would be really boring and loud <laughs> if, we're all, if we're all extroverts. But uh, your personality is important in the service of the kingdom. And your experience is really important too. People go like, oh, I don't know that I could do that. You have life experience. Even if you're only 16 years old, you have life experience that you can use for the glory of God. You can bring all your experiences into wisdom that he gives you to do life with other people. And I would encourage you, I would encourage everybody to, to consider to do that. What I'm able to do, God wants me to do in the life of his family. His master plan is that we all get involved. Rick Warren says again, a non-serving Christian is a contradiction of terms. It's a co complete contradiction of terms. Serving is the opposite of our natural inclination. I'm going to read one more thing from The Purpose Driven Life. 
Oops, lost it. Serving is the opposite of our natural inclination. Most, most of the time, we're more interested in serve us than service. We say, I'm looking for a church that meets my needs and blesses me. Not, I'm looking for a place to serve and be a blessing. We expect others to serve us, not vice versa. But as we mature in Christ, the focus of our lives should increasingly shift to living a life of service. The mature follower of Jesus stops asking, who's going to meet my needs? And starts asking, whose need can I meet? Whose need can I meet? Where can I play a part? A great life key for all of us is just learning to serve the King. Using our lives in service for Him as He gave His life for us. This week, I'd like to encourage all of us to be thinking about, be praying about an area of service that you could get involved in. Maybe you try something new. Talk to, talk to us. Say, hey, I'd like to have a shot at this. We can organize it. Talk to ministry leaders. Talk to department leaders. Say, I wouldn't mind just trying something in 2021 to see how, how it goes. Do that. Because as you start to serve, it opens doors. Never despise the day of the small beginning because Jesus wants us all in this together. We're just going to have a moment where the Lord is going to give you fresh clothing. Just going to spend a couple of minutes before we head out for tea and coffee and cake and uh, just to hang out together. To allow the Lord just to, just I feel like there's a couple of minutes where you could just get some freshness this morning. Fresh oil fresh clothing and just allow the Father to care for you and as we do that think about where could I serve this year what areas I just love the people who are all serving in the, in the life of this church and after church we get to have a sausage sizzle because the Operation Christmas Child people are serving they're raising some funds but they're serving it'll be fantastic so why don't we stand I'm just going to pray and then the worship team are going to use their gifts to just lead us for a few moments. So Father, we thank you that you're here. We thank you that you're with us. We thank you that you want to encourage us to serve, to use the spiritual gifts and the natural abilities that you've given us to make this church family what it can be and what you'd like it to be. As we head into 2021, we pray you put on our hearts the things that we could do. We pray for Kylie that you bring healing into her body this morning. Father, that she'd recover really quickly. She's a great servant. And the reason that she was going to be preaching this morning is because she's one of the greatest servants of this house. And we thank you for her service. We thank you that you heal her in the name of Jesus.